Hi guys, welcome to my channel Amy Howard Art. In today's video I'm going to show you the tips and techniques I use to draw this butterfly. So for this piece I used my favourite go-to paper which is the Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed 140 pound extra white and I also used a mixture of the Faber-Castell Polychromos and the Caran d'Ache Luminance coloured pencils. So I started this piece with the butterfly and first of all adding in those antenna with a sharp dark sepia pencil and to get that really super fine point I use a Derwent Super Point Mini and I make sure that I maintain that point when adding in really small details like these. With the antenna in I started to add the body of the butterfly by layering some warm grey 3 and then filling in the darkest areas with some dark sepia. And when filling in the dark areas I tend to look at the shapes everything is making and think of it that way instead of what I'm actually drawing. So when mapping out these parts I thought in terms of circles, triangles and squares instead of looking at it as fur or fluff. After that I go through with some light layers of warm grey 3 and dark sepia until the tone is as dark as I need it and I make sure that I use an extremely light pressure when I'm doing this and really slowly build the colour and the depth. For the wings I went straight in and added in all of the dark shapes and areas which I could see and these were mainly the dark details on the wings so those big dark blobs that you can see me adding in. I then go over with a base layer of warm grey one and start to work in the colour. As the butterfly's wings don't have any particular direction I added my layers down using really small circular motions to begin with to try and fill as much of the teeth of the paper as possible and that helps to create a really smooth look which kind of mimics the wings of the butterfly. I then go through and map in any dark lines or veins of the wings making sure that I draw them from the fluffy body and blend throughout the rest of the wing and I make sure that I maintain a sharp point when doing this. I also blend a little bit of the fluffy body into the wings by making small tapered lines with my pencil and working directly from the body into the wing and that helps give the illusion that the body is a three dimensional form rather than it looking really flat and unrealistic. So now for the fun part and I really enjoyed adding and layering the colours for the wings of this guy and I started with a base layer of Naples yellow and worked in those small circular motions and then I went over with orange glaze and I concentrated a lot more of this colour into the darkest areas of the wing and I made sure to leave the lightest areas free of this colour. And with those layers in, I then decided to go in and darken up a few of the veins and continue to build that fluffy body by using a sharp burnt umber pencil and dark sepia. I also added a hint of green gold to accent the yellow tones which were hiding underneath that body. With a few more of those layers down, I then go in and add some dark scarlet red to the wings, really concentrating this in the darkest areas, and this is mainly where the wings meet the body. And I start to use more of a shading method for this layer, as the wings have a very slight texture, and to do this I just shade back and forth in the direction that the veins are going, and this helps to give a semi-smooth look. To blend the areas together I go back over with some orange glaze making sure I keep the layer really nice and light and try not to burnish so that I can go back in and add some more details over the top. With a bit more colour applied to the wing I go back over the dark patches with a black pencil and make sure that they are really pronounced and crisp and to do that I just make sure that I maintain that sharp point on my pencil by using my Derwent Super Point Mini. I also add a few faint lines into the coloured part to give it a little bit more texture so I take a little bit of that black pencil and I drag it into the coloured area. I then apply exactly the same process over the remaining part of the wing working in those darkest areas first and then going through with a base layer and then slowly building up the colours working from lightest to darkest.
For the edges of the wings, I went through and outlined all of the edges and any lighter features within there with a dark sepia pencil. I then went through and lightly shaded before going back in with a bit of a harder pressure and really adding that tone down. There were some light blue features within the outer edge of the wing and they were added by using a light ultramarine pencil and then I gently blended with the Caran d'Ache Luminance White before going through and adding any darker details with a dark indigo pencil. When adding these really tiny details on the edges of wings and adding these really precise dots of colour, it's always important to maintain that sharp point so you can get those really precise and crisp details. The remainder of the body of the butterfly was added by layering some warm grey one and some beaster and I worked in the direction that all of the fluff was laying. So I made sure that I really paid attention to my reference photo at this point to really determine the direction that it was going. I used a short shading motion to convey this and I went through and added some darker colours of burnt sienna, walnut brown, dark sepia and black, continuing to work with shading and then eventually adding in tiny tiny hair details with the more dark tones. I made sure to overlap the hairs down the very centre of the body and concentrate a lot more of the darker tones there to try and convey a really three dimensional shape. With the body complete I then went through and added the second half of the first wing and the second wing entirely and I work in exactly the same way from light to dark keeping those pencils really nice and sharp and using light pressure so I can erase any mistakes that I may make and I make sure that I add in all of the dark features so again those dark patterns that you can see on the wings and then I go through and add my layers.
Once complete, I make any adjustments necessary. I go in and darken certain areas, add a little bit more texture to certain areas as well. Just really looking over it with a critical eye and just making any crucial adjustments. I also go in and add a few highlights on the right hand wing underneath that fluffy body and for that I actually went through and used a pastel pencil and a white gel pen. There were some really bright bits underneath there that my white coloured pencil just wasn't able to get so going through and using those extra materials has really helped to complete the contrast there. So with the pastel pencil I made sure it was really nice and sharp and just dotted it down in the areas where I could see those little bits of highlight flecking out and those really bright ones I went through and added with a white gel pen. I also added a few of these highlights to the outer edges of the wings and just pulled up a few highlights going in and using my Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil and just pulled up a few highlights that I could see within the wing itself as well. The flowers on this piece were actually the trickiest part and extremely tedious to try and render and looking back on this piece I can see huge adjustments that need making to the contrasts to try and help convey that element of realism. I approached the flowers in a similar way to the butterfly and started by adding in all of the darkest areas first and I looked at all of the individual shapes which I could see between each flower and added those down with a dark indigo pencil and I find it so much easier to think in terms of shapes and negative space rather than focusing on the subject itself. I went through and started to add the stalks or the bases of the flowers using dark indigo, blue violet and magenta, gently layering them down with a light pressure and gradually building the tone. It's extremely important that you take your time with a subject like this. I found it to be extremely tedious and at times I did get a little bit frustrated, but patience and perseverance is key here. I went through the entire flower adding in all of the stalks and dark areas I could see before going through and paying attention to those flower heads. Stalks in place, I went over the remaining areas with a light layer of ultramarine violet and then blended over with a white pencil. And I did this so that I had a smooth, slick surface to work on for building up those flower values. I worked in small sections and really paid attention to all the shapes, lights and darks and continued to mimic them with my coloured pencils. I made sure I kept a sharp point on my pencil and kept blending with a white pencil to keep everything really nice and smooth. The lighter tones of the flowers were made by layering the ultramarine violet one or two times and blending with the white. The darker tones were made by continuing to layer blue violet, manganese violet, dark indigo and a little bit of that magenta. The flower hearts were added with some orange glaze and shaded using madder and a tiny touch of dark sepia. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to follow along with me in real time with full voiceover, then the five hour tutorial is available to $10 patrons over on Patreon and to my website subscribers. The links for both are listed in the description below for you guys. If you like this tutorial, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below of what you would like me to cover in future tutorials. 
If you're new around here, why not hit that subscribe button and delve into the world of everything coloured pencil. I post new videos every single Friday to help you develop your techniques. That's it from me and I will see you next week. Bye!